Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of a very highly requested microphone. That microphone is the Aston Origin, and if you want to pick up the original microphone kit, that will cost you around $300, and if you want the limited edition black bundle, I believe that's around $370. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set just at around 12 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course you are going to get the microphone. You'll get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and based on some other unboxings that I checked, that seems to be where the original kit ends. But if you get the limited edition black bundle, you will also get a shock mount with an additional 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and you'll get a pop filter. But you get a few more things in both kits. You will of course get a little pamphlet telling you where to download the documentation, and you get a darn sticker. Ew. Gross. Sticker suck. Then as far as the build quality, I am very impressed with the Aston Origin. It does have an all metal body as well as a metal grill. It is a little odd looking, but it does feel very firm and very sturdy. The microphone weighs in at 450 grams. On the front of the microphone, you will find a negative 10 decibel pad, as well as an 80 hertz high pass filter. As you move around the microphone, there is nothing on the rear, but on the bottom, you will find that 5 8 inch threading, as well as an XLR port. And then as far as specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 33 dB, a self noise of around 18 dBA, a max SPL of 127 dB, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Now I am spinning around the origin to 90 degrees so you can hear the off axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's what it sounds like from the rear. Continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle. And then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now let's test the plosive rejection of the mic without the provided pop filter. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. And here is how the microphone rejects plosives with the provided pop filter. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth. And here is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone. Two feet away from the microphone. And about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you elite gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here's how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. Ooh, I'm a ghost! Oh. <laughs> Also, here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. And now to see how well the provided shock mount is at rejecting noise, I am going to go ahead and bump the desk to see how much of that noise it rejects. And I will bump the boom arm. And in case you're getting just the regular kit without the shock mount, now I am bumping the desk to see how much of that noise the microphone by itself rejects. And I will bump the boom arm. And now I'll go ahead and tap the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I am back right on top of the microphone to really accentuate the proximity effect. I do not currently have the high pass filter turned on and here is how the audio sounds. And now I have engaged the 80 hertz high pass filter that is on the microphone and here is how the audio sounds with the switch on as opposed to with the switch not on. 
Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the Aston Origin and a couple of other microphones on the market so you can see how this mic stacks up against its competition. Like always, I am starting on the Aston Origin. I am about six inches off of this microphone. I do not have the high pass filter engaged. My gain on the 18i20 is set at 12 o'clock. No post processing, but here is how this microphone sounds. Let's jump to the first one that we are comparing it to. And the first microphone we're comparing it to is the Neat King B. I am about six inches off of this microphone. I am keeping the gain consistent across all of the samples. So check the lower third to see how much I boosted it in post. But here is how a $130 condenser microphone sounds compared to the Aston Origin. Back on the Aston Origin, here is how this microphone sounds so you can cleanse your palate. Let's jump to the next microphone that we're comparing it to. Next up, we are on the Rode NT1, which goes for between $220 and $270, depending on the kit. Six inches off of the mic, gain at 12 o'clock. Here is how this microphone sounds compared to the Aston. Because we can, we are back on the Aston Origin to waste about five more seconds of your time. Let's jump to another microphone so you can hear how it compares to that. And now, just because I'm a crazy boy, I am talking into the Shure SM7B about six inches off of it. I did increase my gain for this mic to 100%. No filters are on. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. But here is how the Shure SM7B sounds like compared to the Origin. And because you can never get enough comparisons, I am back on the Aston Origin so you can hear this microphone before we jump to one last one and compare it to that. And lastly, we are on the Shure KSM32, which is a $500 condenser microphone. No filters on this thing have been engaged. Gain back at 12 o'clock on the interface. And here is how the audio sounds. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. Which one of these microphones did you like the best? The Aston Origin, Neat King B, Rode NT1, SM7B, or the Shure KSM32? Let me know in the comments down below. Another British mic, I've gotta test it out And won't you tell me how you think that this mic sounds, my friend Seriously, let me know what you think of this microphone in the comments down below And don't forget to hit that smash button Pew 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 I'm a moron <laughs> Alright I think we have another microphone in the $200 to $300 budget range that offers something very different from its competition. And first up in terms of pros, I was really impressed with the off-axis coloration. It wasn't harsh, it wasn't painful, it was usable all the way around the microphone. So if you're in a reverberant room, that is going to be really good for you. Also, the microphone's body is completely dead in my tests. There were no resonant frequencies, so you don't have to worry about bumping it if you're sitting at your desk and you need to move it around. Additionally, the build quality of this microphone feels excellent, and it's built in the UK, so you know that Aston is subject to some environmental and some labor regulations, so they're not doing anything shady or exploitative. And then in terms of cons, the self noise of this microphone isn't terrible at 18 dBA, but comparatively priced microphones do tend to be a little bit lower. The NT1 is below 10 dBA. I believe the Neat King B is below 10 dBA as well. So I would like to see a slightly lower self noise. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions on this microphone? On the electric guitar, I absolutely loved this thing. 
It had just the right amount of bite on the top end with the boost. The mids were not scooped, they weren't over boosted, and with the high pass filter, the lows were nice and controlled, and all around, I thought this thing sounded incredible on the electric guitar. Then on the acoustic guitar, this thing captures every bit of attack of the guitar pick and the guitar strings, and it can give you some very aggressive sounds if that's what you're looking for. When I played a little bit quieter, I did think the upper frequencies were overpowering compared to the mids and the low frequencies, so if you're looking for a more neutral sound, I don't think it really offers that. Next up for singing, the main thing that stood out to me again was the upper frequencies. The mic captures every bit of nuance in your voice. If you have a bit of rasp in your voice, it's going to capture that, it's going to bring that out. If you have a little bit of spittle, it's going to capture that, it's going to bring it out. If you are looking to capture every bit of detail, every bit of character in your voice or an artist's voice, this microphone is going to accomplish that. But as I said on the acoustic guitar, I think that the mids and the low frequencies kind of take a back seat because the top end is so dominant. And lastly for spoken word, this is not just detailed. I would say that this is excruciatingly detailed. As I said for singing, this captures every bit of character and detail in your voice or the artist's voice, so if that's what you're looking for, it excels at that. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Aston Origin? Yes. I should start by saying that this microphone is not really my cup of tea to keep things British because <laughs> Britain... I am much more partial to neutral microphones, much less boosted microphones, but if you are somebody who is looking for a hyper-detailed recording of your voice, acoustic guitar, any other instrument, then I would absolutely recommend this because it does that and it does it in spades. Also, if you are looking for an electric guitar microphone with a bit of bite, oh my god, I love this microphone for that, and I think it sounded outstanding. And that is it for this video, but I want to hear from you in the comments down below. Of all of the microphones that I compared this against, which one was your favorite? Did you like the NT1, the King B, the Aston Origin, the SM7B, or the Shure KSM32? Let me know in the comments down below. And I also want to note that I think my environment is trying to ruin everything that I am recording. I know there is a low-end rumble in the recordings. There is nothing that I can do about that. There are air conditioners seemingly surrounding me on every side, and I cannot get other people to shut them off, so I'm stuck with it. I apologize for that. It's out of my control. And with that being said, if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. Want more videos? Go ahead and subscribe. Click that logo down beneath me and don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, podcastage.com slash Discord. We talk about audio stuff all the time. It is so much fun. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing and beautiful people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Please stay safe. I'll talk to you later. Bye.